Hi, my name is Kevin and today I'm going to give you a tour around the Museum of Plastic. Follow me. It's an epic story set in a groundbreaking virtual reality museum. But first and foremost, it's about our real world. Ecosystems, global communities and inspirational individuals. It's about a world which over the next 100 years comes together to solve our biggest problems. It's about a world in which activists, artists and scientists have imagined a new way of life. Along the way we'll meet activists taking the future into their own hands. We meet the people reinventing the world. And we meet the artists whose mixed reality art promotes responsibility, hard work, inventiveness and leadership, inviting us to use technology to help achieve a sustainable planet. The interesting thing about paint is that it's really just paint, but it has, you know, in the right hands, the ability to tell stories and do so much more than just a bucket of paint can. So, you know, it's, it's magical. There's something in the way that we communicate outside of the spoken word that people are then able to internalize, to reflect back into their own lives. It's things like the color and the shape and the way it flows together that will hopefully inspire people to stop and actually like consider what it represents. So for me, it's all about um, having to get the message to, you know, to those people that are less privileged, that cannot have the access to you know, digital information, you know, TVs, you can just look at it and then get inspired. And the energy of the kids is the one that gave me also some oof. <laughs> at the end of the story, visitors receive an action toolkit. Practical ways to change the course of history. Because, though it's a museum, the most important time in human history is always right now. The driving idea behind the museum is that museums aren't just places to tell stories about the past, they are places to invent stories about the future. As we shift the technology of storytelling to a 3D media, we have a chance to change the tone of storytelling to one that is fundamentally optimistic, where we create futures that we want to live in and that there's drama within it trying to sustain that future or human dramas within it. And if we can do it with plastic then hopefully we can do it with anything and that would inspire people to actually solve the problems as opposed to believing there's just no way out. Plastics are offered a freedom in design. They have no intrinsic colour, shape or texture and so manufacturers and designers can and could create almost anything. Presenting the possibilities of plastics. Plastics help save you from dents and broken bones. It help protect my patella. They help save energy. Thin light plastics. Fewer trucks. Less gas. They help save you from being scrambled. They help save the soda. They help food stay fresher. Brussels sprouts? Plastics can even help save toddlers from trouble. They are a material group of equity too, as they can open up activities to people who might not otherwise be able to enjoy them. Every year in South Africa, Green Pop hosts a festival of action. Young and old people stops talking and starts doing. This year there was a difference. We created two vast murals with local communities in the rural township of Kurlang. It's great if there's a visual on the wall and there's a message with it. Um, it's instant. And uh, that's what I love about street art and especially with this project. There's a message going out without people having to read. The concept over here is future cities and hopefully it will inspire everyone to grow their own, take care of the environment a bit more and uh, yeah, enjoy it while they do it. Instead of throwing things away, we try to get another use out of them or uh, disassemble them and use the 
components to make something else. So this is known as the circular economy, and it's about getting the maximum value from our resources. So the number one thing that needs to be done for our action toolkit is reducing the amount of single-use plastic that needs to be made in the first place. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Reduce what we buy, reuse what we have, and recycle what we're done with. As individuals, we can all do this. It's within our power. How does the community actually see themselves in this position? So the reason I have this character in the back, this very ambiguous character, anyone that goes past this mural feels like, yo, I can actually do that too, man. This guy's not flying, doesn't have any laser beams or whatever. He's a very ordinary character looking hopeful at the future. You know, it's just about taking the step. This person or this character took this, the first step, you know, that leads on to a whole domino effect of changes. Street art in particular, it's very big and bold and it's available to everyone. If we're told something person to person, for example, don't buy plastic, that message isn't really going to resonate with people, whereas if it is communicated through a piece of art or poetry or a song, I think the impact of that, it's often received better than someone just telling you what to do. As a more traditional artist, it was a, a great way of putting myself in a digital world and connecting to a newer generation. Internationally, people can be able to, you know, to access the world without even having to travel. And also to see what the possibilities are for me as an artist to take my work from a mural and working digitally with it. Having to now create things that I, I was not able to create before, you know, it, it opened doors for me to experiment. It allowed me to think outside the box. The world at the moment in 2022 is feeling terribly bleak, with the media presenting us with terrifying predictions. Many of us are feeling massive anxiety about the future and having real doubt that individual action can have an impact. But that's not the way we see it. The Museum of Plastic is a collective action between artists, activists, government, and tech companies. What we all share is that we believe in action. We aren't scared of the future. We're hopeful for it. We should be seeing the implementation of producer responsibility laws, legislation against single-use plastic, and fines for companies which don't comply. But we also need to see laws that make doing the right thing easier, incentives for waste segregation and recycling, and strengthening of markets for recycled plastic. The action toolkit that we've put together delves into some of the things that actually needs to happen in order for us to achieve these imagined futures. Businesses need to innovate. Governments need to support innovation through funding and incentivizing green chemistry research and plastic alternatives. People and mainstream culture have to be encouraging and enthusiastic about those searching for solutions. The Museum of Plastic looks forward to a time when society has embraced new ways of living. With the new technologies to help us, and where old single-use plastic is only found in museums. In this tour, we've only skimmed the surface. Like any museum, the best way to experience it is to come and explore yourself. <laughs>